Good morning and welcome to Kid News. I'm Tori. Today is Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. And we begin with the nation's leading university announcing its answer to the giant question mark surrounding the fall semester. Harvard now says even though all courses will be online, it will welcome 40 percent of undergraduates back to campus. That includes the entire freshman class and a handful of others who can make a compelling argument that they need to be there. Then, depending on where the coronavirus is come January, seniors will take the place of the freshmen in order to spend their last college hurrah on the Crimson campus. Harvard joins a growing number of universities that intend to bring back only a portion of their students come fall. What's in store for those in grade school through high school? No one knows yet. But a resident pediatrician, Dr. Alice Brock Utna, is weighing in on the medical side. Check out her blog at www.kidnews.org. It turns out your pup isn't as old or as young as you think she is. Brand new research shows that often used equation, one dog year equals seven human ones, is just plain wrong. Scientists at UC San Diego tracked molecular changes in the DNA of 100 Labrador retrievers and found that a one-year-old pup is more like 30. And by the time Fido's four, he's feeling more like 52. But dogs don't advance by leaps and bounds forever. When they reach around seven, their aging starts to slow down and level off. The study published in the Cell Systems Journal only looked at labs, but researchers are pretty confident their findings will apply to every dog on the block. Major League Baseball is doing what it can to hype its coronavirus-shortened season. Last night, it held a televised special just to announce the schedule. The first pitch will be thrown on July 23rd, with each team playing 40 divisional games and 20 interleague games. And while the official matchups are now out in the light of day, we're just now learning that a handful of the sport's best players played ball in secret during the shutdown. According to The Athletic, Max Scherzer, Giancarlo Stanton, and Justin Verlander, and a whole host of others, met up to play at Palm Beach Gardens High School in Florida. How'd they avoid blowing their cover? No posts to social media. Don't nuke your novels. It's a sign of the times request coming from your local librarian. With all the germ talk these days, books are being returned with clear evidence they've spent some time in a microwave, likely because the borrowers thought it would help rid the pages of COVID-19. But there are a couple reasons why it's a bad idea. First, embedded in each is a radio frequency identification tag, also known as RFID. It's part of the library's book tracking system and is made out of metal. Metal and microwaves don't mix, and you could start a fire. Second, most, if not all, libraries are way ahead of the game when it comes to safety precautions. Returns are put into quarantine for 72 hours, which the CDC believes is long enough to kill the virus on most surfaces. Statues continue to come down from coast to coast, but now a small town in Ohio may prop them all back up. The city manager of Newton Falls has issued a proclamation offering a home to all the problematic figures who've been removed from their pedestals due to a history of racial injustice or inequity. David Lynch went so far as to declare Newton Falls a statuary sanctuary city, giving general amnesty and promising a place of honor for the likes of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, Ulysses S. Grant, Patrick Henry, Francis Scott Key, Theodore Roosevelt, and Christopher Columbus. Not all the town's residents are as enthusiastic, and at least one is organizing an online petition to block the relocation effort. That's it for Kid News. Now, our Kid News Quiz. What's Harvard's plan for the fall? Only freshmen will live on campus in the fall, only seniors in the spring. What did researchers just debunk about dogs? That one dog year equals seven human years. Librarians are asking the public to not do what? Microwave borrowed books. 
What town has just declared itself a sanctuary city for statues? Newton Falls in Ohio. In one for the road, the NFL is reportedly taking another step forward in its pledge to improve race relations and equality. According to sources, the league will play the song Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is regarded as the Black National Anthem, before the singing of the Star Spangled Banner at all Week 1 games. NFL officials are also working on a way to honor victims of police brutality, perhaps with helmet decals or jersey emblems, and will air a number of educational public service announcements during the broadcasts. Before we go, we have Kid News birthday shout-outs for Izzy in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, Maria in Georgetown in the Cayman Islands, Tyler in Libertyville, Illinois, Caroline in Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, Anna Rose in Prattville, Alabama, Piper in Tucson, Arizona, Anna in California, Mia in San Carlos, Kaylee in Santa Cruz, Theo in Mountain View, and Kellen in Sonoma. Thanks for listening, everyone. Please rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll see you back here for more Kid News tomorrow morning.